frustration. I'd rather not vote at all, y'all. I'd rather not. Because I'm not siding with abomination. If I know that this is what you stand for and you're okay with it, I'm not siding with it. Doesn't matter what it is. You know, and we have leadership in the body of Christ that's allowing these things, right? Because it doesn't matter if you, you don't have to do it yourself and you don't have to say, oh, tell someone to go do it. But if you allow it, you're just as guilty. It's just like when the when the when when Babylon, right? When they came to invade Jerusalem because Hezekiah messed up and he showed everybody his riches, right? How many of you know that story? Just like when, when they showed up, when the Babylonians showed up, right? The kingdom of Edom, come on, the kingdom of Edom, they saw what was going on. They're supposed to be the brother, the kin of Israel. And they turned their back. They looked the other way. So if you look the other way, you're just as guilty. So we cannot allow the body of Christ to side with these abominations. We need to get to a place. This is why, realistically, you know, we pray against abortions and we pray against these things. But at the end of the day, we should be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ for their spiritual eyes to be opened so that they understand that they cannot side with abominations. Because if the body of Christ was united, and we were able to come against these things, then we would see real results. Then we would really see real results. And why am I telling you that? Because at the end of the day, here's the situation. You could have, you could have one third of the people, right? Who are, who are functioning against it, who are praying against it and trying to get heaven to move. But then you have the other two thirds that are allowing the compromise, allowing and siding with the abomination, right? What is that? You got two thirds of the people that are doing it. What's that? 666.6%. You're talking about 666, 66.6% .6 of the people, right? Are siding with the abomination in the body of Christ. And how many of you know, in relation to a father and a son relationship, I don't know about y'all, but when I was a kid, if my father came home from work and we, we were doing a bunch of stuff that was messed up, if he couldn't figure out, come on, if he couldn't figure out who did it, everybody got in trouble. So now we're all serving a sentence because of what the body of Christ has allowed into the churches and allowed into our government. Come on, somebody. Am I talking good? This is what's actually happening. We need to open our eyes because God is our father. So we're all literally on punishment right now. And I'm going to give you some of my testimony because I've said this before. And I'm going to share it with you right now really quickly. I don't want to take up too much time, but I'm going to share this with you. Right. When I speak about abortion, I speak from firsthand experience. Because when I was a young child, when I was a young man, when I was a young man in my early 20s, I dealt with these abortions and I had I had two women that did this to me. One of them did it completely behind my back where I didn't even know that she did it. I was, I found out later and it broke my spirit and it broke my heart and it crushed me. Another time I had another woman that I was dating that who was pregnant. This is when I was backslidden in my early twenties, um, years ago, I had a woman who did this to me and she hit me with that saying that's, this is my body, my choice. And she basically said, there's nothing you could do about it. I'm doing it. And I begged her not to. I tried to stop it. Didn't happen. She did it anyway. And let me tell you something. Anybody, anybody who has dealt with this abortion stuff firsthand, this thing torments you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm telling you, I experienced it myself. This thing tormented me for years and years and years to the point where it would haunt me. Because I felt so convicted, even after I gave my life back to Christ, you know, reconciled with the Lord, surrendered everything to God, I still felt that conviction that I was a murderer. And I wasn't even firsthand who did it, but I was an accomplice, basically, so I was like a murderer. And then until one day, my wife, who I love very much, um, one day she came to me and she said, you know, I had a dream. And in that dream, 
we were getting married again and we're walking down the aisle and all our children were there. And then there was two little girls and I couldn't figure out who they were, but they were there walking in and they were beautiful. And when she said that to me, I literally just broke down and started crying because I knew that God had shown her that those were my two daughters that didn't make it. And it haunted me for years. It tormented me for years. And not until recently when I received deliverance from our apostle, um, our spiritual father, Apostle Pagani, he conducted deliverance on me. And not until that deliverance where he called it out just by the Holy Spirit alone, because he never knew that. No one ever knew that. When he conducted deliverance on me and he called it out, literally, I went into a wailing, like a, like a deep wailing. And finally, after all these years, I was delivered from that conviction, from that torment, from that haunting of having to deal with uh, the abortions that happened in my life. So when I tell you this stuff, I'm speaking from experience. This is a horrific thing. And there's demonic forces that are attached to torment that torment you when you're dealing with this stuff. So I just, wanted to, I just wanted to share that with you so you understand that the compromises that have been happening in the body of Christ, this is what has driven us to a place where we're dealing with a sentence right now. We're dealing with a punishment right now from our Father because He has punished us all for what everybody has done. He has punished the body of Christ. We're dealing with something. There's been times, and I know you guys have experienced this stuff. There has been times where we've prayed for somebody and they instantly get healed. There's been times where, you know, we pray for people, they get delivered all the time, you know? So why is it that with this COVID thing, it's overtaken leaders in the body of Christ. It's taken out important people, you know, influential people that we keep asking ourselves like, Lord, how could this person have died? How could you, how could this person have lost their life to the pandemic, to the COVID-19 when, when we're all praying, when they're a powerful man or woman of God, they've been praying, they've been seeking you for years. Like, how could they have lost their life to this thing? How could they have been overcome by this sickness, by this pestilence? And I'm going to tell you why. There's two reasons. And then I'm going to close out with this because I'm I'm just I'm trying to share with you what's actually happening out there because we just we need people to pray. We need everybody to just lift up their brother and sister in Christ. We need people to lift up the body. We need people to intercede for the leadership. We need people to pray that the spiritual eyes of these leaders will be open because they all love the Lord, but somehow they got blinded by some type of demonic force that's blinding them to not see that these abominations are against the law of God. They're against the divine order of God. So I just want to share this with you. So you understand we keep asking the question how did these people lose their lives how did they how did, how were they taken how were they taken prematurely when they they had more time they had time to give they they served the body of Christ for so many years and i'm going to give it to you at the beginning of the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic and my wife can attest to this i don't know how far we can go back but the videos out there somewhere at the beginning of the pandemic I prophesied to the body of Christ and I said to the body, I said, listen, you know, the Lord took me to Numbers chapter 20 and he said to me, okay, that Numbers chapter 20 is when the Lord said to Moses, take Aaron the priest up the mountain and strip him of his priestly garments and put it on his son. And then Aaron passed away. The Lord took him. And the Lord said to me at that time, at the beginning of the pandemic, Throughout this COVID-19 pandemic, many will lose their life. Many leaders in the body of Christ will lose their life because they have done as much as they can do, but they've made mistakes along the way. And now I have to strip them of the mantle and I'm going to put it on the sons of God that are rise, rising up in this hour that are ready to take that mantle and run with it and get people saved and get people delivered and push the vision of God and push the holiness walk because we're walking in holiness, true repentance, true holiness. So when the Lord gave me that word at the beginning of the pandemic, when we first found out about the pandemic, the Lord told me that and told me, release it over the body because as they see it happening, they're going to realize that I spoke and I said that I was 
taking out those that have made huge mistakes along the way. I honor them for what they've done, but their time has come to an end. So I'm taking them up the mountain. I'm stripping them of their mantle and I'm putting it on someone who's ready to take this mantle and run all the way to the finish line. Fight the good fight and run the race until the end to make sure that they get people saved and delivered before my return. So that's one of the things that's happening. There's two reasons. I told you there's two reasons why important leaders in the body of Christ have passed. That's the first one. That's what the Lord said to me in the beginning of the pandemic. The Lord told me that. The second thing the Lord just told me the other day, and I'm going to share it with you. Genesis chapter 5, that's the chapter where Enoch got raptured. The Bible says that he walked with God and then he was not, for the Lord took him up to heaven. And that's Genesis chapter 5. Now, why is that significant? Because he lived 365 years. What does that tell you? He lived a complete full season for the Lord accomplished everything he had to accomplish, spoke the word of the Lord, prophesied and preached, told people about the Lord, brought conviction of sin, did his job and finished his race. And when his season was over, because he, he worked for the Lord for a full season, 365, come on, 365, that represents all four seasons past and he went full circle, did everything he needed to do for the Lord, and then the Lord raptured him and took him. Now, why is this significant? I don't know how many of you know that recently a very powerful, uh, significant leader in the body of Christ has passed away, Marcus Lamb, the founder and president of Daystart Television one of the largest television networks for Christian television that has preached the gospel all over the world. And how many of you know that, you know, when Jesus said, preach the gospel to all ends of the earth, this is what's actually happening. We're living in the days where the Lord is, is allowing us to preach the gospel all over the world through, through social media, through Christian television, um, through, through all different outlet media outlets where we can preach the gospel all over the world. So this man is responsible for sharing the gospel all over the world. Now, if you watch Daystar Television, you see that they have a lot of good programming, very good content, and things of that nature. However, if you actually watched Marcus Lamb preach a message, he was a Holy Ghost fire evangelist who preached all over the world, and the fire of God uh, flowed right through him every time he preached. Miracles, signs, and wonders would happen. He did so many things for the body that it didn't make sense that he was taken out and he was taken prematurely at the age of 64, right? The Lord took him, right? And when you think of him, right? Because listen, let's not get religious and say, oh, you know, he probably committed some kind of secret sin and that's why God let him die. No, no, I'm not, I'm not believing that because you know what? None of us are perfect and we all fall short of the glory of God. We can't sit here and say that we're perfect all the time and that, you know, God is covering us because we're so much holier than everybody else. That is not correct in my opinion, but I will tell you what I'm seeing here. Okay. The Lord has spoken to me and God told me that there are certain people, like I said, like Aaron, the priest, they fought the good fight. They ran the race. They made some mistakes and God said their time was up. And then there's others where God takes them away, like the way he took Enoch. And he says, you know what? He did his job. He preached the gospel. He fought the good fight. And now, you know what? You guys have not listened or not heeded the word of the Lord. And now I'm going to take him because you know what? He did what he had to do. And the body of Christ doesn't deserve these powerful men and women of God because our eyes are closed. Our eyes are shut. Our spiritual eyes are not open to what God is doing. So he took them away. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the Lord speaks to me in numbers. And the Lord said to me, Enoch lived 365 years. Come on, follow with me here. Enoch lived 365 years. Marcus Lamb lived 64 years. The Lord said to me, my son, how many times does 64 go into 365? And I said, Lord, what do you, what do you mean? You're telling me to, to look at numbers. 
64 goes into 365 5.7 times. Come on, somebody. I'm getting somewhere here. 64 years that he lived on the earth. That goes into the 365, which is the perfect number of completion where God took Enoch. It goes into that number 5.7 times. And I'm going to explain this to you, why this is so significant. Receive this as a word of the Lord. The Lord is speaking. The number five is grace. The number five equals grace. So Marcus Lamb, the Lord said to me, Marcus Lamb is under the grace of God. And the number 0.7, the number 70, right? The Bible in Psalms chapter 90. Moses, the prayer of Moses, he said, the days of our lives are 70 years. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Listen to what I'm telling you here. The grace of God took Marcus Lamb 5.7 times into the 365 perfect number of God where he took Enoch. So what the Lord is saying, receive this as a word of the Lord. What the Lord is saying is that by the grace of God, he removed Marcus Lamb from the earth. He removed him because he did his job correctly. He preached the gospel all over the world. He did everything God asked him to do, and the Lord took him. And what's left over after the number five of grace? What's left over is the 70 years. So receive this as a word of the Lord. There is one generation that is left. Jesus is coming back. The Lord is about to make his entrance. There is one generation that's left now that can stand up to the devil, that can stand up to the kingdom of darkness, that can stand up to the wiles of the enemy, that can stand up to the, to the fiery darts of the enemy, that can stand up to the abortion, that can stand up to the abominations. There's one generation. That point seventy is us, the remnant that is left on the earth. There's one generation that is left after the passing of Marcus Lamb. There's one generation that is left that has to walk in holiness, that has to preach the gospel that has to cast out devils that has to heal the sick that has to raise the dead because jesus is coming back the lord is coming back and we have one opportunity to get this thing right and i declare by the word of the lord that this is the moment we need to pray and lift up those leaders that are not seeing that their eyes have been shut we need to pray that the scales would fall off their eyes that this would be broken in the spirit that they would wake up and see that they cannot see side with abominations that they cannot side with what the enemy is doing that they cannot be on the fence that they cannot be lukewarm the lord is saying that anyone that is lukewarm in this hour he's gonna spit you out right now but i declare by the name and the power that's in the blood of jesus that god is gonna show you in a dream god is gonna show you in a vision the lord is gonna reveal himself to you Receive this as a word of the Lord. I pray that this gets out and people will see this video and they would understand that we have one generation left and we've been hearing this for a long time, but the Lord is speaking. Jesus is coming back. He's going to make his return. Repent. Repent, body of Christ. Repent, people of God. This is the time and the season. This is the hour. L the Lord is trying to speak to you. This is where it's going to come to a, to a place where we really have to make a decision. Are we going to stand up for holiness and righteousness no matter what the cost? Because walking with Christ... Picking up our cross, it's costly. But I'm, I'm going to declare strength over you right now in the name of Jesus. We declare strength, power, fire anointing over you that you will not back down, that you would stand up to the fiery darts of the enemy, that you will no longer compromise in the churches, that you will no longer compromise with sin, that you will no longer, no matter what, because you know what, just like the three Hebrew boys, even if we get thrown in the fire, we're not going to bow to your idols. We're not going to bow to the idol of, of, a uh, of cancel culture. We're not going to buy to bow to these idols. And you know what? We don't even care because 
We believe that the Lord will deliver us. And even if he doesn't deliver us, we still won't bow. Come on. Come on. I don't know if you heard me tonight, but you better receive this as a word of the Lord. This is a word straight from heaven. I didn't get this from no book. I didn't read this anywhere. This is a word straight from heaven. The Lord is speaking right now. And I just declare that you will hear it, that you will share it, that you will get it out there because there's brothers and sisters out there that still have the scales on their eyes. And we need this thing to be broken. We need to unite as the body of Christ. We need to stand up against the terrors of the enemy, against the wiles of the enemy, against the abominations of the enemy. We need to stand up in this hour. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, my Lord. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to your people, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the revelation from heaven. We thank you, Holy Ghost, for everything that you're doing, Lord. We thank you for everything. We honor you. We ask you, Lord, that you would just continue to speak to your people, Lord, that you would continue to show them, Lord. We pray that the scales would fall off. We pray that the blinders would fall off. We pray that the, the spiritual eyes would be open in this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that this word would hit your spirit and that you would receive this as a word of the Lord. We thank you for joining us tonight. We thank you for just sharing this time with us so that the Lord can speak through his people. Amen. We love you all. We thank you. On behalf of myself, Pastor Armando, my beautiful wife, Pastor Tish, and our senior leaders, this is Forever Fire Ministries under the covering of Amazing Church New York City, where we serve and love the people, love our leaders, our senior leaders, the chief apostles, Alexander Pagani, Apostle Alexander Pagani, and Apostle Ibelis Pagani. We thank you all. Thank you for joining us. We love you. We pray that this word is a blessing to you. Amen. Love you guys. I'm out of here. Praise the Lord. Thank you.